What if I told you that you could actually turn back the clock on type 2 diabetes? Oh, wow. Not just manage it. Right. But actually reverse it. Imagine like ditching the meds. Yeah. Regaining control of your health. Uh-huh. And even freeing up thousands of dollars a year. Wow. Sounds pretty good, right? Yeah, that sounds amazing. Well, that's exactly what we're diving into today. The possibility of reversing type 2 diabetes. I love it. And a huge thanks to London Heartbeat Z Academy in the UK. Yes. For the insightful material that we're exploring today. Absolutely. And don't forget to subscribe to our channels on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and YouTube so you can get free regular updates. Yes. And not miss any of our future deep dives. Yeah. Now, before we jump into the specifics, okay. let's take a moment to kind of think about what it really means to be healthy. Okay. The World Health Organization defines health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Right. What are your thoughts on this definition? Well, I think it's a really important reminder that health is about so much more than just not being sick. Right. It's about feeling good in your body. Yeah. Having a positive mindset <laughs> and feeling connected to others. I like that. It's a holistic view that encompasses all aspects of our being. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It really challenges us to think about health. Yeah. In a broader sense. Absolutely. Now let's shift gears to type 2 diabetes and the question of whether reversal is truly possible. Okay. One thing that really struck me was the economic burden of this disease. Yes. The global cost is projected to reach a staggering $2.1 trillion by 2030. Yeah, that's right. And it's a number that really underscores the urgency of finding solutions. Wow. Put that into perspective. Yeah. Think about it this way. If we could reverse diabetes for a significant portion of the population, right. we could potentially free up trillions of dollars. Wow. That could be invested in other areas like education or infrastructure. It's amazing to think about the ripple effect. Yes. That reversing diabetes could help. Absolutely. And it's not just a global issue either. Right. A study in India found that people in urban areas are spending an average of $227 per year on diabetes care. Okay. While those in rural areas are spending around $142. That's a significant financial burden for individuals and families. Yeah especially in a country like India where access to healthcare can be a challenge. Exactly. Yeah. It really highlights the need for accessible and affordable solutions. It does. And speaking of solutions, yeah. We're seeing a rise in what we call lifestyle diseases. Okay. Including conditions like hypertension, heart disease, uh. and of course, type 2 diabetes. Right. In fact, studies have shown that a significant portion of employees over 40 in places like NTPC projects are dealing with these kinds of conditions. It's concerning to see how lifestyle choices are impacting our health on such a large scale. It is. See. But the good news is that lifestyle changes can also be part of the solution. Okay. In the case of NTPC, they found that they were spending an average of 3,000 Indian rupees wow. per month per patient on diabetes treatment. Okay. Which adds up to a whopping 1.5 crore rupees annually for an estimated 400 patients. Wow. If they could help even a portion of those employees reverse their diabetes, yeah. the cost savings would be substantial. That's a perfect example of how individual health is connected to the bigger picture. Right. Oh, and yeah. it really underscores the point that medication should be the last resort, okay. not the first line of defense. Yeah. There's a growing body of evidence suggesting that we can actually reverse type 2 diabetes through targeted lifestyle interventions. Okay, that's where things get really interesting. Yes. Let's get to the good stuff. Absolutely. What kind of evidence are we talking about? There have been some very promising studies, okay. including one called the Diabetes Remission Clinical Trial, okay. or DIRECT. Okay. They found that 36% of participants were able to achieve sustained remission at the two-year mark. Wow. What that means is that they were essentially able to reverse their diabetes simply through dietary changes and maintaining weight loss. That's incredible. They also saw a significant drop in their HbA1c levels, oh, okay. which is a measure of long-term blood sugar control. Right. And they were able to reduce their use of diabetes medications by 50%. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. I'm starting to see why you're so excited about this research. It's pretty amazing stuff. Yeah. And DIRECT isn't the only study showing positive results. Okay. Other research has explored the potential benefits of approaches like intermittent fasting and low-carbohydrate diets. Mm -hmm. For instance, one case report published in 2018 in the BMI Case Reports Journal looked at how intermittent fasting could be used as an alternative to insulin for some people with type 2 diabetes. 
So it seems like there's a real shift happening yes. in how we think about managing or even yeah. reversing yes. type 2 diabetes. Absolutely. But before we get too deep into the solutions, let's take a step back and look at the scope of the problem. Yeah. What's the current state of the global diabetes epidemic? The numbers are pretty alarming. Oh, no. Globally, diabetes cases have jumped from 108 million in 1990 to a staggering 422 million in 2018. Wow. And the prevalence among adults has risen from 4.7% to 8.5% during that same period. Wow, those are some pretty sobering statistics. Yeah. What's the situation like in India specifically? In 2018, India reported over 72 million cases of diabetes. Okay. Which represents about 8.7% of the adult population. Wow. And projections suggest that India, along with China, mm -hmm. will continue to be among the top 10 countries grappling with the highest number of diabetes cases by the year 2040. So it's clear that we need to find effective solutions. Yes. And we need to find them fast. Absolutely. And as Bill Gates once said, treatment without prevention is simply unsustainable. Right. If you're just joining us, we're talking about the possibility of reversing type 2 diabetes. And we'll be diving into the specifics of how that might be possible after a quick message. Okay. Make sure you're subscribed to our channels on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and YouTube for more deep dives like this one. Yeah. Yeah. You won't want to miss our fascinating discussions. Absolutely. Welcome back. Before the break, we were discussing the scale of the global diabetes epidemic and the urgent need for solutions. Yeah. Let's take a closer look at how this disease actually affects the body. You know, before I learned about diabetes reversal. Okay. I used to think of it as like a life sentence. Right. But now I realize there's hope. Yes. And I think to better understand that hope, yeah, I think it's important to understand how diabetes works, yeah. what's yeah. actually happening at a cellular level. So at its core, okay. diabetes is a disease where the body struggles to use glucose for energy. Okay. Glucose is basically sugar, and it's our cell's primary fuel source right. to get that glucose into our cells. Yeah. We need a hormone called insulin. You can think of insulin as a key that unlocks the doors to our cells. Okay. Allowing glucose to enter. Okay, I'm following so far. Yeah. Insulin is the key. Yes. Glucose is the fuel. Uh-huh. And our cells are the houses that need that fuel. Exactly. So what goes wrong in diabetes? Exactly. In type 1 diabetes, the body doesn't produce insulin at all. Oh, wow. So it's like there's no key to unlock those doors right. in type 2 diabetes, exactly. which is far more common. Mm -hmm. The problem is insulin resistance. Okay. It's like the key is there, yeah. but it doesn't quite fit the lock properly. So mm. even though there's insulin in the bloodstream, yeah. the glucose can't get into the cells efficiently. That makes so much sense. Yeah. And all that extra glucose hanging around in the bloodstream, yes. that's yeah. what causes all the problems, right? Right. Over time, high blood sugar can damage blood vessels and nerves. Oh, wow. Leading to a whole host of complications, including heart disease, stroke, kidney disease. Oh, my goodness. Vision problems and nerve damage. Wow, that's scary stuff. It is. So how do doctors actually diagnose diabetes? What are the tests they use? There are a few key tests. Right. One is the A1C test, okay. which gives us a snapshot of your average blood sugar levels over the past two to three months. Okay. An A1C of 6.5% or higher is typically indicative of diabetes. Okay. Another test is the fasting blood sugar test. Okay. Which measures your blood sugar after you've gone without food for at least eight hours. Okay. A reading of 126 milligrams per deciliter or higher suggests diabetes. Wow. And then there's the glucose tolerance test, okay. which involves drinking a sugary drink and then having your blood sugar checked periodically over two hours. So these tests help determine whether someone has diabetes or not. Right. But what about prediabetes? Where does that fit in? Prediabetes is like a warning sign okay. that your blood sugar levels are higher than normal, okay. but not high enough to be diagnosed with full-blown diabetes. Right. It's a critical stage for intervention. Because lifestyle changes can often prevent or delay the progression to type 2 diabetes. It sounds like catching it early is key. Absolutely. And yeah. that's why it's so important to be aware of the risk factors. Right. And to get regular checkups. Okay. So we've talked about how diabetes is diagnosed and the potential complications. Yes. Now let's talk about treatment. Okay. What are some of the common approaches? Traditional approaches often focus on 
managing blood sugar levels with medication. Okay. But what's really exciting is that there's a growing movement towards addressing the root cause of type 2 diabetes, yeah. which is insulin resistance. That sounds like a much more holistic approach. It is. But how do you actually reverse insulin resistance? There are three key pillars. Okay. Managing stress, uh -huh. making dietary changes, okay. and getting regular exercise. Okay. So it's a multi-pronged approach. Yes. Let's break each of those down. Okay. First, stress management. Okay. Why is that so important? Well, when we're stressed, our bodies release a hormone called cortisol. Rad. Which, among other things, raises our blood sugar levels. Oh, wow. Over time, chronic stress can contribute to insulin resistance. I see. So finding healthy ways to manage stress, yeah. such as mindfulness practices, yoga, uh -huh. or spending time in nature is essential. It's amazing how interconnected our bodies are. Yeah. How stress can actually impact something like insulin resistance. It really is. Yeah. And speaking of interconnectedness. Yeah. Let's move on to diet. Okay. You mentioned low glycemic index foods earlier. Yeah. Can you explain what those are and why they're important? Sure. The glycemic index, or GI, measures how quickly a food raises your blood sugar levels. Right. So low GI foods are digested and absorbed more slowly. Yes. Which leads to a more gradual rise in blood sugar and insulin. Right. And that's important because those blood sugar spikes that you get from high GI foods yeah. can actually contribute to insulin resistance over time. So by choosing low GI foods, yeah. we can help stabilize our blood sugar. And potentially even reverse insulin resistance. Exactly. That's pretty powerful. It is. And there's a lot of research to back this up. Okay. Oh, a 2018 review of multiple studies found that low GI diets are more effective than high GI diets in controlling blood sugar in people with type 2 diabetes. Okay, so we've got stress management and diet. Yes. What about exercise? Okay. How does that fit into the picture? Exercise is incredible because it actually increases insulin sensitivity. Okay. Meaning your cells become more responsive to insulin. Okay. It also helps your muscles use glucose for energy even without relying on insulin. Wow. So it's like exercise creates multiple pathways for glucose to get where it needs to go. Yes. I had no idea. It's pretty amazing. And so, the best part is you don't have to be a marathon runner to reap the benefits. Right. Aim for at least two and a half hours of moderate intensity exercise per week. Okay. That could include things like brisk walking, swimming, dancing, or even gardening. This is all so fascinating. Yeah. But I'm sure some of our listeners are wondering. Yeah. What are the real world benefits? of reversing diabetes. Right. What does that actually look like? The benefits are pretty remarkable. Okay. You could potentially be free from medication. Wow. Have fewer doctor visits. Okay. And experience better blood sugar control. That's great. You'd also be reducing your risk of all those scary complications we talked about earlier. Right. And let's not forget the financial savings. Those are some pretty compelling reasons to make some changes. Absolutely. But how long does this reversal process typically take? It really depends on a number of factors, okay. including your age, uh -huh. how long you've had diabetes, right. how well your blood sugar has been controlled, and what medications you're currently taking. Okay. But in many cases, we see significant improvements within a few months. Okay. And for some people, complete reversal is possible within a year. It's incredibly encouraging. Yeah. And how do you track progress? Regular blood tests are key. Okay. We'll monitor your A1C levels. Your fasting blood sugar and other markers to see how your body is responding to the interventions. Okay, so let's say someone is ready to embark on this diabetes reversal journey. Okay. What does a comprehensive program typically entail? Well, as we discussed, yeah. it involves a combination of dietary changes, right. stress management techniques, uh -huh. and exercise. Right. But it's also about creating a supportive environment and empowering individuals to take control of their health. We've covered a lot of ground today. We have. And I know our listeners are eager to hear more about the specifics of a diabetes reversal diet. Yes. So let's move on and delve into those details. Okay. Sounds good. Welcome back. Over the break, we were talking about the exciting possibility of reversing type 2 diabetes through lifestyle changes. Yes. Let's dive into what a diabetes reversal diet might look like. Okay. You mentioned earlier the difference between plant and animal protein when it comes to insulin sensitivity. You're explaining how plant proteins are generally better for us in terms of managing blood sugar. Yes. Can you elaborate on that a bit more? Sure. It all comes down to how our immune system reacts to different types of protein. Okay. 
Plant proteins tend to be easier for our bodies to digest and process. Right. While some animal proteins can trigger a bit of an inflammatory response. Okay. And chronic inflammation can actually contribute to insulin resistance. Interesting. So it's not just about the protein itself. Right. But also how our body interacts with it. Exactly. And there's a growing body of research to support this idea. Okay. Multiple studies have shown that plant-based proteins can improve body composition, reduce body weight and insulin resistance, and even lower the risk of death. Wow, that's pretty compelling evidence. Yeah. What specific dietary recommendations would you suggest for someone looking to reverse their type 2 diabetes? The first step is to really minimize refined sugars and processed foods. Things like white sugar, white bread, and packaged snacks are going to spike your blood sugar and contribute to insulin resistance. Right. Instead, focus on whole, unprocessed foods like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and nuts and seeds. So it's about getting back to basics. Yes. And eating more real whole foods. Exactly. And within that framework, there are a few key things to keep in mind. Okay. First, try to avoid white sugar, refined flour, maida, and food of animal origin as much as possible. Okay. You'll also want to limit your intake of ghee, ice cream, butter, and other berry products. Okay. That makes sense. Are there any good alternatives? To things like dairy milk. Definitely. Nut milk, like almond milk or cashew milk and coconut water can be great options. It's all about making those swaps. Right. And finding healthier alternatives. Right. And remember, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Powerful words. Now, I've heard that eating raw foods can be beneficial for diabetes reversal. Yes. Can you speak to that? There's an interesting correlation between overcooked food and the risk of developing diabetes. Okay. The more we cook our food the more we alter its natural structure and nutrient content. So the idea is to eat more foods in their natural state. Yes. Think about it. Fruits, vegetables, sprouts, nuts, they're all perfectly designed to be eaten raw. That makes a lot of sense. It's about going back to nature and embracing the way food is meant to be eaten. Exactly. And another important concept to be aware of is the glycemic index, or GI. Okay. It ranks carbohydrates based on how quickly they raise your blood sugar levels. Right. Lower GI foods are digested and absorbed more slowly, ah. which helps prevent those blood sugar spikes. So it's not just about what you eat, but also how different foods affect your blood sugar. Precisely. A good rule of thumb is to aim for low GI foods, which have a score of 55 or less. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind when making food choices. Yes. Now, what about vitamin D? Okay. I know it's important for overall health, right? but does it play a specific role in diabetes? Vitamin D is crucial for a healthy immune system. Right. And research has shown that people with vitamin D deficiency are at a higher risk of developing diabetes. So getting enough sunshine and making sure we have adequate vitamin D levels is important. Absolutely. And I know that all of this dietary information can feel a bit overwhelming. Right. But it's not about being perfect. It's about making gradual changes and finding a way of eating that feels sustainable for you. That's a good reminder. Hmm? It's about progress, not perfection. Exactly. Now, I know many listeners are probably wondering if a diabetes reversal diet is restrictive or bland. Right. Can you offer some reassurance and perhaps share a success story? A diabetes reversal diet doesn't have to be boring or restrictive. You can still enjoy delicious and satisfying meals. Okay. For example, for breakfast, you could have a mix of sprouts, coconut, soaked almonds, tomato, beetroot, green chili, coriander leaves, and a squeeze of lemon. Okay. Before noon, enjoy some fruits like papaya and pomegranate. And for lunch or dinner, load up on a variety of raw vegetables like tomatoes, bell peppers, carrots, radishes, and cucumbers. Okay. You can also include a portion of your favorite cooked food like rice, lentils, or a vegetable curry. Okay. For snacks, Opt for citrus fruits and soaked dry fruits. That sounds delicious and easy to follow. It is. Do you have a real-world example of someone who successfully reversed their diabetes through diet and lifestyle changes? Yes. We had a patient who came to us with very high blood sugar levels. Oh, wow. He was initially hesitant to make lifestyle changes and even consulted another doctor who recommended lifelong medication. Oh, no. However, he eventually decided to give our approach a try. Good for him. He diligently followed the diet and exercise plan, and within three months, his blood sugar levels significantly improved. Wow. He's been able to maintain those healthy levels ever since without needing medication. That's a powerful story. It really highlights the fact that this is possible. Absolutely. Reversing diabetes isn't just a pipe dream. 
It's something that people are doing every day. Exactly. And this particular case really illustrated the importance of consuming healthy fats from natural plant-based sources. So is it not about avoiding fat altogether, but rather choosing the right kinds of fat? Exactly. Healthy fats from sources like avocados, nuts, seeds, and olive oil can actually improve insulin sensitivity. That's good to know. Oh. Now, beyond diet, yeah. what other lifestyle changes can help with diabetes management and reversal? Here are some key things to keep in mind. Eat before you feel hungry, take your time to eat, and have meals at regular times. Okay. This helps to regulate your blood sugar levels and prevents those energy crashes. Right. Keep a stock of healthy food readily available so you're not tempted to reach for unhealthy snacks. That's a good idea. Limit your intake of dairy products, refined foods, sugar, salt, and oil. Okay. Make sure you get at least one hour of sunshine daily to boost your vitamin D levels. Right. Aim for 30 minutes of exercise daily and consider incorporating activities like yoga and meditation for stress management. Yeah, that's a good idea. And lastly, closely monitor your blood sugar levels and gradually reduce your medication dosage under the guidance of your healthcare professional. Those are some great practical tips. I hope so. Now, before we wrap up, yeah. I want to go back to the idea of exercise for a moment. Okay. You mentioned earlier that it can actually increase insulin sensitivity. Yes. Can you explain how that works? Exercise is like magic for our bodies. Yeah. When we engage in physical activity, our muscles become more efficient at using glucose for energy. Uh huh. And the more our muscles use glucose, the less of it stays circulating in our bloodstream. Right which helps to lower blood sugar levels. So it's like exercise helps our bodies use insulin more effectively. Exactly. And it also helps to reduce body fat. Okay. Which can further improve insulin sensitivity. It's incredible how something as simple as moving our bodies I know. can have such a profound impact on our health. It truly is. And the best part is that it doesn't have to be strenuous. Right. Even... And thank you to all our listeners for joining us. Yes. Thank you. Remember, knowledge is power. Absolutely. Understanding the science behind diabetes and the potential for reversal can give you the strength and motivation you need to make lasting changes. It really can. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and YouTube for more fascinating deep dives. Yes, please do. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and stay empowered. Great advice.